yeah, so with that, I'll be passing it on to, uh, uh, to Jocelyn. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Jocelyn Hu, and I'm a second year applied nutrition major. And I'm going to put everyone in gallery mode because I don't want to stare at myself. But um, yeah, I will be speaking about um, specifically discontentment and having an eternal perspective. But first, I'm going to quickly go over three things I learned in general about growth that I feel like I didn't completely understand before. And so the first thing is that um, it doesn't always look like a really strong uphill. I feel like um, before my growth or um, what I didn't really know that um, it wouldn't always be like fun and I didn't I wouldn't always know that like oh I'm like getting better and better or something like that but um, I think um, after sharing about my discontentment you'll get a better idea of that later and secondly um, to give yourself a lot of grace because I feel like also like not a very strong uphill like sometimes when sin is revealed and you're working on it it's really tough if um, it's something that is hard to work on and I feel like often I get really hard on myself and luckily I had a really good conversation with Melissa and Ellie and they reminded me that um, God's grace is sufficient for me and his grace is so sufficient for everyone and it's so empowering and um, lastly um, that sometimes you won't notice it yourself like uh, you won't notice the growth yourself. It's kind of like that analogy that Matt Mendoza used for like the baby. Like if you're growing up next to it, you don't really notice it. But if you're like an uncle or an aunt who hasn't seen a baby in a long time, you're like, whoa, you've grown so much. Um, I didn't really notice my growth until like like three people told me. <laughs> I was like, oh, like must, must something must have like changed or happened down the way. <laughs> but um, yeah, so now I'm going to talk about um, discontentment and having an eternal perspective. And so a little bit of my quarantine story. Um, after um, when COVID hit and we went back home, um, I think it was winter break. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, it's such a good break from school. I feel like it was very restful for me because it was a good break from all the distractions. And um, I had a good time like reflecting on, my, on myself, but then like spring quarter came and it's like, oh, I guess I'll be at home, but it's okay. Maybe I'll go back to school next year, you know? And then um, summer came and actually, I think I really started growing a lot in the summer. Um, or that's when like I <laughs> noticed it um, and like people brought it up to me because um, in <laughs> during summer um, my friend had like conversations with me and actually her mom was watching a lot of prophecies but um, they happened to be false like some of them happened to be false prophets and I was telling her like no like that doesn't seem right to me and um, she was like I think like through our conversations, I just realized that like Jesus is coming a lot sooner than I thought. And I initially was like reacting in a very panicked way. And I was like, oh my gosh, Jesus is coming soon. Like I'm not ready for that. And I think just realizing that, um, yeah, I have so much to work on and I need to be ready when he comes. And yeah, we talked about this in d -ship. Um, <laughs> Melissa and I were like, bottom line is that we have to live every day as if Jesus is coming tomorrow. But um, that's still something I have to work on. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that was probably like the beginning of my eternal perspective. Um, but yeah, during summer, I just realized that my summer was a lot like growing pains. Um, if you talk to me <laughs> in the summer, you probably like know that. Um, and by growing pains, I mean when um, sin is revealed to you and then that leads to godly sorrow. And in 2 Corinthians 7, 10 to 11, it says, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. 
but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. Um, yeah, I feel like that godly sorrow was definitely brought a lot of that into my life and just, um, I guess, a lot of things for me to work on. Um, so that was my summer, basically. And then as summer um, was nearing to an end, that's when I realized that I wasn't able to go back to school in the fall. And I was like super bummed. <laughs> just like a lot of things were just not going the way I had expected and hoped for. And um, I think that's when I really entered into like a period of like frustration. Um, it's just like, I think also like, like what also added on was like, oh yeah, I'm also working on this and like frustrated with myself with that. And then like, and then like plus discontentment. So just like a ton of frustration. And I realized that I was very, very frustrated with myself and sometimes even God and just like super discontent with the circumstances um, I was in and everything. And um, yeah, school started and I was still in my little pool of frustration, but um, around then was when I read Job. And um, if you haven't read Job, I'll give you like a very, very quick summary that doesn't cover like half of everything. But um, so in Job, Job is someone who suffers a lot. Um, my suffering can't even compare to his. He was like physically like, um, he had like boils all over his body. I think he just like was rotting physically, if <laughs> that makes sense. And like, um, yeah, he was like definitely not doing well, but basically in Job, he asked like three friends for advice and they don't really give that great of advice. And then like, Job was like, I'm just gonna talk to God about it. And then like, he talks to God about it and God actually responds to him. And it's like, whoa, God responds. But um, God just like says a little bit about like who he is. And then um, in the next chapter, Job responds to God and is like, wow, like he, I lack knowledge and I repent in dust and ashes. I feel like that was exactly how I felt because I realized my discontentment was very stemmed in like a lack of trust in God and knowing who God is and like knowing him personally. And um, I felt, I was like, yeah, I'm so sorry, God. I lack knowledge and I repent in dust and ashes. And um, yeah, to give a little bit more of a picture of my discontentment, um, uh, in CG, we were reading Philippians, and we were on the passage that says, do not grumble. And um, uh, one of the questions was, um, yeah, so the passage says, do not grumble, but what's like one thing on your mind you want to grumble about right now? And um, that's what Anna asked, and then like the first girl went, and then the second girl went, and I was like, oh darn it it's my turn and then Anna was like what about you Jocelyn and then I was like oh I have so much to say and I just feel like my head was full of like oh this and that and then they were like oh go for it so then I like just like went off and then I started crying <laughs> just because I feel like I don't know not it wasn't that like oh so much was going on but it was just like I was just so like immersed in my discontentment plus like my I actually had a pretty chill quarter fall quarter but it was like um so chill that I was like <laughs> having more time to spend thinking about my discontentment and my circumstances that like um I was just like yeah super upset and discontent and yeah so from all of this I really just noticed that I was placing my hopes in a lot of worldly things and not that those are bad but um ultimately our hope needs to be in Jesus coming like um <laughs> like what I was talking about earlier and um at the end of the day it's just going to be me and God it's not going to be like oh me and my friends or me like getting to do this thing or yeah it's just going to be me and God and um and also that um I was listening to this message and 
um, they're saying that discontentment is making an idol of what you want. And I was like, what? No way. That's like idolatry. And I was like, whoa, yeah, in a way it really is because contentment should stem from the Lord and we already have him. And so if we already have the most desirable thing we could ever have, why should we be discontent? Um, yeah, I think um, I also just realized it was total lack of trust in God. And this was a heart issue and not being able to see God rightly. And um, just like realizing that God knows what I need and he's given me all that I need. So how can I complain? And actually it was around this time that um, I was watching a lecture or something on YouTube. And then on the side, it was like, oh, Grace College Live. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know they were still doing live. Um, Cause in the fall, I didn't know they were still gonna do live. And this was when Pastor Darren was going over the Meeting God series. And um, I just happened to click on it and watch it. And it was about living water and I was like oh my gosh I need that living water and um so I think um just like really working on like fearing the Lord more and knowing him and also like more growing pains after that but then um I think like from Job I really learned that like God is always good you know but then like somewhere along the line I was like yeah God is always good but does he really really care what like I want like, you know, maybe he's just good, but like he'll like fix something and like, I don't know, just like he'll make me do things that I don't, I don't know. But I think at the end of the day, um, he, the answer is yes, he does really care what you want. Um, Pastor Darren always says this quote that I wrote down, I really like it. And it's from John Piper. It says that God is most glorified in me when I'm most satisfied in him. And yeah, when I was like pondering over this, um, I like looked it up and I like read the desiring God thing because I was like, mm, like I need to be convinced, you know? <laughs> and so like, I was like reading and reading and like, I was like, mm, I guess I'm kind of convinced, but I don't think it really hit until like this next thing happened. And so, um, this was a little more recently. Um, I noticed that like things weren't going the way I had expected <laughs> for again. And it's like multiple things in a row. And one of them was housing complications, but um, there were like other things as well. My parents got mad at me and then about something really small and then turned into something big, but um, just like little things like that. And I was like, why God, why does this happen? Why does that happen? And um, this was when I realized that, um, yes, God does um, really care about you. And my friend actually sent me the verse when I was processing things with her. And it is James 1, 16 and 17. And it says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows like wow our god is so faithful and he never changes i think um that was really what i needed because um yeah my friend was like yeah has god ever failed you and i was like no and she's like yeah what makes you think he'll fail you now and i'm like ah oh, you're right <laughs> but um yeah so I think that this round, I just like, that was super encouraging for me and just realized that I've been growing quicker to realize that it's a heart issue and I need to draw near to God when I'm like frustrated and discontent. And one more verse to summarize what I feel like my quarantine has been like is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. And that says, um, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outward, outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving us for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Um, so we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I think, um, yeah, often seems like I'm wasting away. <laughs> I feel like I've been pretty MIA from a lot of things this year. Um, 
yeah so but no like in reality I'm being renewed each day and that's such a huge blessing to know and if you weren't listening to any of that I'm going to end with two little things to say and then one last question and I hope um you leave with this and um my two little things to say are don't miss out and don't miss it and what I mean by don't miss out is don't miss out on giving things to God. Don't miss out on seeing him rightly and having an eternal perspective. Um, giving thanks to God and seeing him rightly are not things non-Christians can do. Only Christians have a God to give thanks to. And if you happen to be non-Christian, um, I would encourage you to ask someone about who this God is, that um, he is so great, that um, he ultimately only, he will be able to satisfy our um, heart's deepest desires and don't miss it. Um, don't miss out on all that God's doing in your life. And if you don't see it, ask God um, what he's doing. And um, also just trust that um, God's always doing 1,000 things when um, you're only aware of like two or three of them. Uh, that's also John Piper quote, I'm sure you've heard. Um, lastly, I will end with my favorite question recently, and this is what I asked myself if I find myself being discontent again, and um, that is how big is your God? And um, if you really think about it, our God is so infinitely big and far better than we can ever imagine, and he loves us so deeply and cares for us more than we can ever know. And um, yeah, that is all I have to say. And next on, Clement will be speaking about his growth. And yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Jocelyn. Uh, that was really, really awesome to hear. Um, I'm happy to, like we're, we're all really, really happy to be able to hear about how God's worked in your life. And thank you for sharing. Yeah, so, um, Hey everyone, my name is Clement and I am a third year aerospace engineering major. Um, and for some reason, Melissa and Kevin decided to ask me to speak tonight. Uh, I don't know why, but even crazier than that is that uh, I said yes, so I'm here. Um, but my, my talk will, will just be a little bit of story and hopefully, hopefully it'll be fun. So here goes. Um, I think it was a few weeks ago, like late evening. Uh, it was a pretty chill week and I was at Grover Beach uh, for a bonfire with some of the people in my class. And <laughs> I get a text from Melissa saying like, we're planning on having student speakers for a large group and you came to mind. And I was like, oh, speeches. I don't wanna write a speech. Like Council 101 was enough speeches for a lifetime, right? But you know, you know, sometimes there's just something deep down inside that's like, oh, you should do it, like something pulling on you, tugging on you. So I was like, you know, like YOLO, right? So I, I messaged her back. I'm like, all right, uh, send me some more information. And Melissa replies like, you know, it's gonna be something about a season of growth that you feel like God's put you in or you feel like God's teaching you, uh, kind of tied into the theme of Kaizen. Uh, great, I feel like this quarter, has definitely not been my strongest seasons with God. And I have not been doing my quiet time. I have been slacking on prayer. I have not been bringing things to God, right? Like so many great things to talk about, right? What has God been teaching me? I have no idea. But she says to prayerfully consider. And I'm like, well, okay, prayerfully consider. Sounds good. That sounds like a great opportunity for me to pray to God and consider and bring things to him and maybe he'll teach me something right like four weeks four weeks until the week that i'm supposed to speak at large group that's a lot of time for god to show me something so i say to myself i'm going to pray this week i'm going to bring it to god and we'll see what he says well news flash one week passes melissa hits me up again and it's like hey have you had a chance to think more about it to be honest, I have not prayed at all or considered at all. And logical reasoning is say yes, right? So YOLO, I say yes um, to speaking at large group. Uh, but that, that's okay because it, it's been a chill quarter so far. And 
I think that I have time. I think, you know, like with, with really little classes, uh, the work's not too bad. Like even my clubs, like we don't really have that many deadlines. Like I'll have time to, to get back on track with my quiet time and to refocus on God. Um, but maybe some of you already kind of see a theme here, uh, but things don't always go the way that I plan. Um, but I think that God also works in a pretty ironic way sometimes. Uh, whenever we feel like we're in control, whenever I feel like I'm in control, uh, things are going great, right? Like the quarters chill, life is good. I'm able to go to bonfires on the beach with my class, right? Um, those are the times where God steps in and he's like, nah, nah, let me show this man what's up, right? Like this, this guy don't got nothing in control, right? I'm the one who's in control, right? So those are the times I feel like God really, really is like, hey, I'm gonna be a troll and like mess something up. So um, anyways, back to the story. Uh, I was asked to share about four weeks ago. Uh, now, one week later, three weeks ago, uh, Lent began. And if you guys don't know what Lent is, it's just like a time six weeks before Easter where sometimes Christians will uh, choose to fast from something. And um, they'll, they'll usually fast from maybe like coffee. I know my pastor did that. He was like, all right, I'm gonna fast from coffee because I feel like reliant on it. And I feel like with by, by giving something up um, that I feel like is important to me, giving up to God, um, like God really can work through that and show us something cool. So um, sounds like a great idea, right? But I felt my life was going well. It was a pretty chill quarter again. And uh, I was planning to just like sit this one out, right? Like 2021, enough things to think about, like I'm not gonna do Lent. Um, but then out of nowhere, one of my friends from back home, like from high school, he, he hits me up and he's like, hey Clement, you know, you know I'm gonna be fasting for Lent and I'm gonna be fasting from watching soccer. And this guy's like a huge soccer buff, like watches a whole bunch. And I'm like, oh yeah, like sounds good. Uh, go you, right? I, I'm proud that you, you've decided to make this decision. And then he's like, would you be down to partner with me and fast from something too? And I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. This is like, this is something different. I was planning to like set this one out, right? But, but he says, okay, like I'll partner with you and we can keep each other accountable. And again, this thing like deep down inside is like tugging at me. He's like, oh, oh, you should do it. You should do it. And I do it. So I decided to fast from YouTube. I don't know about you guys, but YouTube is like, um, they're very good at what they do. Uh, they have lots of coders that code very good algorithms so that like when you start watching stuff, like three hours later, you're like, oh shoot, I just watched three hours of random stuff because like they feed you video and you just like, om nom 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 nom. Like it, it's, it's crazy, but, um, let me get some water real quick. <laughs> om nom nom nom, yes. Uh, but it, it was a chill quarter. I had time to burn. So I was watching like a lot of YouTube, like three, four hours of YouTube a day. Um, but I decided, you know, I'm gonna take this time. I'm gonna give up YouTube. And with this three, four hours a day, like perfect time to study the word, perfect time to read the Bible, to pray to God, like God's got to be able to use this to show me something. God's got to be able to like teach me something three hours a day, right? That's a lot of time. But then, like I said, God works in the most ironic ways. And when I think I'm in control, he says, hell no. Nah. And so that very next week I had what I would say is the busiest week of my entire life, college career, like anything, uh, complete 180 from the rest of the quarter. Um, in one week, I had four quizzes, two midterms, two projects, two club deadlines, and I went to two house tours. Uh, and if you looked at my calendar that week, it was like 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., like back to back to back to back to back for five days. Uh, and I don't know, maybe some of you have schedules like that and can do it, but I can say with full confidence that I, Clement Chung, have not, been, have not been designed by the creator in heaven to be pushed to these limits. 
Uh, so that was that was a crazy time, right? Uh, when I think I'm in control, God says, no, that's that. So did I have time to read my Bible, spend time with God, pray during that week? No. Uh, at the time, I felt that God still hadn't shown me anything worth sharing, right? I was still completely lost. Um, now we arrive at this week. Uh, as you know, I'm speaking to you tonight. Uh, and this is Tuesday night. I still have no idea what I'm about, about to share. Um, and I think Melissa like messaged uh, Jocelyn and Tanya and me like, like oh, oh, like during the weekend, like, oh, what do you want to speak on? Or what do you plan to speak on? And I gave some like, maybe slightly placeholder, slightly BS response. That was like, oh, I've been busy and like, God showed me something, but um, sorry, that was like slight placeholder. I actually had no idea what I was gonna be talking about yet. Uh, but, but I sat down, I sat down Tuesday night and I started reflecting on how I had got here. Um, I literally like typed this out, starting from Melissa messaging me at the beach. And I started typing. And as I started reflecting on how I got here, I began to recall ways that God had provided. Um, you know, it's only been a few weeks, but I think that he's been working in my life, even when I felt like I was lacking in my spiritual walk. Like I said, I, I was putting off studying the word. I was putting off thinking about God, putting off reading the Bible, but through it all, there was still so many times that God made himself known. So we'll start here and work our way back. If my friend hadn't reached out and asked me to join him in fasting from YouTube for Lent, I don't think I would have had time, had the time, like physical time to get through that busiest week of my life. From a purely objective standpoint, I had more things to do that week than any other week in my life. And yet I wasn't stressed. Like not to say I wasn't, I didn't have any stress, but I was honestly like pretty happy through that entire week. Um, it was more work than I've ever done in my life. Like all three years of college, like 12 years of high school, whatever, preschool, of course, it's like you're not stressed, but um, it was crazy. And somehow I was still able to feel joy and it was definitely far from any sort of suffocating pressure that I felt in quarters before. And I think that when we give control to God, he like, like kind of like when I decided to um, fast from something for Lent, I said, God, like here is three to four hours of my time. I thought God would show me something through reading the Bible, through praying, but maybe that's not always like the way that we expect, right? Um, let's see. Like, th there was no way I could have asked God, hey, God, give me more time, like physically give me more time, right? Like, you need to sleep a certain amount of times, a certain amount of hours in a day. You have 24 hours in a day, only however many hours in a week. And you can't physically say, God, give me four hours of my life. But in saying, like, God, here is four hours of time that I, I thought I would be doing with other things, um, take and use it as you see fit, like, God still worked in a really amazing way. But that was just Lent. If oh, a week before that, if I hadn't impulsively decided to speak for a large group, I don't think I would have felt as inclined to make a commitment for Lent. Part of the reason was, hey, I feel like I don't know what to talk about for a large group. Let me somehow like ask God to tell me something to speak for a large group, right? Um, and finally, if Melissa and Kevin had never asked me to speak at a large group to begin with, it might be a very different Clement that you see speaking to you today. So, you know, God always doesn't always wait for us to be ready to turn to him. Um, sometimes we're in a season where we don't even feel close to him, uh, but he's continually working in our lives. And it really is just a matter of taking time, looking back and seeing how far he's carried us. Um, sometimes maybe it's just, it just takes saying like YOLO, right? And seeing what God is truly capable of doing. And 
it's only when we look back that we can see the unimaginable ways that he really has blessed and grown us. And maybe this is what prayerfully consider means too. I know Melissa asked me to prayerfully consider speaking a large group, but I think as I've prayerfully considered how God has worked in my life, even when, when I thought I was super far away from him, when I thought I was just doing my own thing, chilling, like there really is, it, it, it's crazy to, it's crazy to think about. Like we can turn back the clock to four weeks ago, Clem and Chung sits at Grover Beach reading the text message that uh, is asking him to speak at a large group. And he wonders why me, right? But little does he know, God's got uh, something special in store for him. So yeah, maybe uh, takeaway for tonight is just um, think about how God has worked in your life. You might not you might not think that he has. You might think that you're super far away, that that you're just living your own life and that um, there's nothing God can do to like show you anything, right? Like I thought that, I thought that for four weeks. But when I look back in the past four weeks, there's just been so much that has happened. Um, yeah, so thank you and uh, let's give it up for Tanya as she shares about uh, how God uh, has been working in her life as well. So, yeah. Thanks, Clement. Um, hi, I'm Tanya, if we haven't met. Um, yeah, a little intro about myself. I'm a fourth year um, and I'm a business student concentrating in accounting and information systems. And I'm gonna be talking about a, a season of growth where um, I was discerning um, what to do for post-grad and yeah, just trying to figure out God's will for me. Um, and this is just a little disclaimer that this like 10, 15 minute summary talk of my season um, is very condensed. Um, there's a lot more side stories and a lot more conversations that I couldn't focus on um, just so I could just save time. So I focus majorly on um, points or just condense certain things or events. But if you want to hear the full story, like hit me up. I would love to talk about it sometime. Um, but yeah, like Clements, I'm going to be talking more like a story format in a like chronological order. Um, so like I said, I'm a business student I'm going into accounting information systems. And um, yeah, accounting is not something I'm super passionate in. So sorry to all the accounting people here. Um, but at the same time, I wasn't really passionate about anything else. Um, and you know, accounting just seemed like the stable choice to go for. Um, and for non-business students, at the end of your second year, you actually have to declare a concentration. So I chose accounting um, and I struggled a lot with this actually because um, I felt like I was going into this concentration and into this journey with no purpose. Um, and for me, I really need a reason why and I need a goal that um, I'm like fixated towards um, to really, um, yeah, to, to just push myself. And um, yeah, so it was really hard for me to be content with accounting and sticking with this. And I actually really contemplating like switching concentrations, even switching majors at some point, um, had some very interesting conversations with my parents. Um, but yeah, I eventually became content with my decision after reading Garden City with my past discipler Eunice. Um, and it, it was a really good book because it talked about how you could be furthering God's kingdom regardless of like what job or like what journey you really choose. Um, just as if you were willing and um, to just do what um, God is like telling you to. Um, and this kind of gave me a purpose and a why to go into accounting. It's like, oh, like God will use me in some way to like further his kingdom. And I feel like that allowed for me to be content to a certain point. And yeah, so that was like the end of second year and about a half year of being content, I actually ended up going on vision trip um, to Southeast Asia in December of 2019. And vision trip was, um, a really amazing week and a really amazing experience um, that was just like filled with so many God moving stories that I wish I could 
go into detail about, um, but that in itself is like a whole nother talk that I could do. Um, but yeah, so during um, vision trip, I actually got to talk with one of the centers. Um, Center stands for um, short-term international team. And so I got to talk to one of them about like why he decided to, um, yeah, stint and like give up like financial stability and like um, pursue that route. And talking about it with him, he explained how an average Asian lives about 100 years, you know, give or take, depending on your hereditary genes. Um, and you give up one year of your plans to serve God. That's only 1% of your life. And um, in our society now, we have that saying of like, time equals money. And, you know, in the scripture, it says like, we're supposed to tithe 10%. And so what does tithing your time look like? Um, and going back to like the 1%, you know, that 1%, that one year is not even like up to that 10%. We're not even hitting that minimum, right? And I think that just gave me a lot of food for thought um, because for me, I wasn't passionate about accounting and um, going on vision trip for that one week made me really happy. And I was just like, man, like if I could do this, like that'd be awesome. Um, so definitely gave me a lot of food for thought because it would mean like giving up like some financial stability for a little bit. Um, uh, but yeah, that conversation wasn't like the ultimatum decision. Like, yeah, I'm going to go stint now. Um, but when I came back, it took a lot of thinking. It took a lot of conversations with friends, um, non-Christian and Christian friends, um, my parents, extended family, pastor, um, et cetera. Um, and those conversations gave me more food for thought that I also do not really have time to get into. Um, but yeah, to just give you like, um, I guess like a time aspect is like these conversations basically like lasted from January till June. Um, and there were some hard conversations, there were some tears, um, but yeah, and I think um, the conversation with my parents too was a hard one um, because at first when I proposed this, they were definitely worried because this was also the start of the pandemic. So the economy was like kind of crashing um, and like people were losing their jobs. So they were definitely worried um, that I wouldn't be able to find a job and that was like totally valid. Um, and they were also really worried um, going abroad in the middle of a pandemic as well um because you know what if i get sick and like things happen um and i totally understood that from their perspective um and it was hard because like i think my desire was there but like i also understood their worries and for me i respect my parents' opinion a lot because they have been really supportive of me throughout my whole entire life and I know that their intentions are like just caring for me so that was like kind of hard to take in at first um so yeah that was like March-ish and so my internship rolls around um I had an internship with one of the big four accounting firms and this is around like July I believe um of last year and um, yeah, I proposed to my recruiter about like wanting to start a year later um, rather than um, the usual right after graduation. And she said that, yeah, usually it's possible to accommodate for this, but with the pandemic, it just like kind of changed a lot of things. And I totally understood that it changed a lot of things for everyone. And um, yeah, at that point, I was like, all right, God, like I did like whatever I humanly could. Um, I put everything on the table and I'll be content with what, with wherever you put me, whether that be in full-time corporate work with an accounting or yeah, taking a year for missions um, or even like full-time uh, missions or yeah, that was also on the table. Um, so throughout my internship, I was just like, kind of like thinking about it, but I definitely did not want to like probe my um, recruiter or anything. So the week of when like offers were supposed to be kind of like um, told to people, I actually wrote in my prayer journal asking God for like reassurance that I was doing something right, some sort of like signal from him that, um, that yeah, that I was doing his will. Um, and by the grace of God, I got an offer to start in fall 2022, a year after my graduation. And um, yeah, it was really cool because the person who was actually giving me my offer was asking like, oh, like, why are you taking a year? Um, why are you starting in 2022 if you're going to graduate in 2021, right? 
And I told him like my passion to want to go stint and go on this like one year mission trip. And he was like, wow, that's so cool that you want to travel abroad to um, do that work. Like most people um, want to go travel and have fun and just vacation, but you're really going out there with a purpose and furthering God's kingdom and pursuing that calling with your faith. And for me, that was like, I was like very shook just because I have met this man for five minutes and like he was just like he was just saying these things and like obviously I didn't want to be like are you Christian um but yeah he just reassured me of the next steps that I was taking in life whether he was Christian or not he reassured me that um what I was doing is the right choice and I think yeah, that was like such a God moment and like God's hand was definitely in there. Um, and that's like what I needed at that moment to just like be content and like reassured in my decision. And yeah, now my parents are very on board as well because they see that I have financial stability in the near future. Um, so everything's good now. Um, so that's where I am now. Um, I have currently submitted my application for stint, um, but we'll see what happens this year with the pandemic and where um, God will put me. Um, but yeah, this within this long season of discernment, I feel like it sounds like really smooth and like, yeah, like God really did provide, but like in the moment, like I was very frustrated with myself, with God, with a lot of things. And um, yeah, it took, it took two years, y'all. That was a long time to get where I am. Um, but I grew a lot um, in like figuring out who I am, uh, figuring out what I wanted and also um, figuring out, yeah, like what was God's calling for me and like what God's purpose for like everyone is as well and comparing it to myself. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to my little talk. Um, as I said, like, this is very condensed. If you want to hear the very long, full story, um, hit me up sometime and I would love to talk about it. Um, so yeah, thank you. I believe I am handing it back off to the MCs now.